Welcome to Strider Trees. Today we've got kind of a fun rigging scenario I want to tell you guys about. On Instagram, the last few videos I've posted have been about these remote anchor setups that I find I'm using more and more, especially since I've got the GRCS to apply pretension. And in a scenario like this, where we're dealing with this oak tree that's entirely over this garage, uh, this is the ticket. It's really cool. It's gonna let me lift these branches up and away. It's gonna help me untangle them from the mess that, because I'm gonna have to cut some of the top branches. They're gonna wanna fall in, get tangled. We'll be able to lift them out with a GRCS. So that's gonna be pretty sweet. But I've been wanting to show you a breakdown of how I set this up. Um, in this case, I'm using it in a pine. It's a little bit different in an oak tree, but it's pretty darn similar. And so hopefully you guys will find this useful. All right, check it out. So here is our, our kind of all the anchors and that um, are on this tree. This is my remote rigging tree. In this scenario, I'm actually supporting myself. My climb line is in the same tree as the rigging. One of the better things about remote anchors is that a lot of times you don't have to be. Like I could have my climb line in the tree that I'm climbing, but in this case, the structure of the tree is real flat and arched over, which makes for a really lousy personal anchor from my own tie-in point. And we're, we're anchoring to this big old heavy duty pine. And so I'm really not worried about the stress that the rigging is going to put on the pine. So I feel totally comfortable with my climb line in here. Um, I've got a little bit of an uh, example and some video of what that looks like at the top, so we'll show you that later. But down here, let me just explain. We've got the base anchor for our primary rigging point. So this heavy-duty polyester core, polyester cover rigging line with relatively low stretch and low twist, this is what um, has got the pulley going through it which is supporting this line. So this is our actual rigging line. It's, it's another low stretch poly poly rope, but it's uh, poly poly double braid, but it's a little smaller diameter because this rope is experiencing twice the load, roughly twice the load of this rope because of that pulley that we're using to lift with. And we've got the GRCS. This rope is only barely long enough. I'll probably have to put a little extension on the side that I'm using so that we can get everything to the ground. But this is the GRCS we'll use We'll take some wraps here. We'll be able to lift with the GRCS and we're gonna use this rigging rope to pull branches up and over and out of this other tree that's behind us over here uh, and over the top of the garage. So we'll get some video of that, kind of how all this is all positioned relative our rigging scenario. But I love the fact that it's over here off to the side behind where, where, where our work is because I'll be able to make cuts and have all this material peel away from me where I'm at in the tree and we can put as much tension as we want because this is super solid. Uh, at 20% at minimum breaking strength of our weakest possible link is gonna put us somewhere in the neighborhood of oh, 1,600 pounds of tension, pounds of force. Uh, this is good for 2,000 at, at working load. So we're pretty well within tolerances for everything we're gonna pick. Uh, all of our pieces should be probably sub 600 pounds. So we can pull as hard as we want and uh, rig everything real safely. So hopefully you get to see some of that action here. So we've got this beautiful multi-trunked black oak here in California, and we see a lot of these. They have a tendency to split along those uh, co-dominant unions down at the base, but this one is already going all out every direction. So I've set up some cabling up above there a couple years ago to try and keep it together. But either way, it still ends up reaching out every few years and we need to trim the tips up and away from these structures. We got one set, one set of tips that's over the top of this garage. And earlier on this spring, when the weight was a little heavier, it was actually almost on the roof. And then we've got this other set of tips that's even now, while it's a little bit lighter, is getting close to the roof line of the main house. So this poses a couple of particular challenges. Number one, obviously we don't wanna to drop too much stuff on the roof or on the gutters. But number two, anything I cut from up above and I'm trying to reduce the length of this, so I need to take some cuts from, from branches up towards the top of the canopy. They're gonna wanna get snagged and caught and, and not wanna fall through the rest of the canopy down below. So I'm gonna go up, I'm gonna inspect some cables and we're gonna take some tip weight out to try and reduce the overall length and a little bit of the weight down out at the extremes of the tree and the canopy. And then uh, we'll rig it all to the ground and process it here. Good morning. I want to show you guys today what I frequently use as my remote anchor setup. Um, I got it all right in front of me and hopefully it'll make sense to you. There's a lot of ropes going on, but I'll try and explain it real well here. Okay, So this rope here is my climb line. It's uh, Samson Mercury, not a big fan and it's sapped all hell. So it's going to be a bit, I'd rather be using my zigzag, but uh, I left it in the other toolbox. Anyway, I've got it not blocked up here through this, uh, 
Petzl Eject. And the reason I'm doing that instead of just going up and over myself with this line is because I'm trying to avoid some extra sap on this. This eject will let me pull it off the, can the um, bark a little bit and maybe spare some sap uh, and maybe not, but it should make for retrieval pretty, being pretty easy. And it's not blocked because I want to be on single line. It also allows this, uh, it keeps this lower leg out from being at risk of something happening down below me. If something happens down below me or one of these rigging lines rubs through and burns this side of the rope, uh, I will still be secure uh, through the eject. So it, it makes me a little bit safer and it saves my, my rope from a little bit of sap up top here. But anyway, that's my climb line. And then right here, obviously this is my flip line. And then this line here is uh, about a 16,000 pound static uh, rigging rope. And I've got it wrapped two thirds of the way around the tree and then back down. And it's gonna be base anchored to the bottom of the tree. This is gonna be my primary remote rigging point. So I've got that pulley on there, uh, just a, a bowlin with a Yosemite finish. And then I've got my rigging line through this. I use a really static, kind of low stretch polyester polycore uh, rigging line because we're gonna be lifting with the GRCS and it just works better. It's a lot less running of the GRCS, a lot less running of my drill down below if I use a more static lifting line. So the cool thing about this setup is that when I'm all done, it all is retrievable from the ground. The eject, I'll be able to tie a little uh, retrieval ball onto this end. It'll pull through and release that. And then this, I can use the GRCS pulling down on my rigging line. And if I untie the base anchor from this rope, I'll be able to pull that whole rope to the ground using this pulley. So long as my ropes are run nice and straight and parallel each other. If there's a branch in between, then there'll be a problem. But um, even if there is a branch, I can just not block, kind of like I'm doing here, pull one end of the rope all the way up and through and then pull the rest of it down. So it's all retrievable from the ground and it's gonna allow me to use this, this uh, arborist block as a canopy anchor for the oak down there that you can't really see. That's all over the top of the roof of a garage right here and a house over here. So I'll show you that when we get lower. All right, hopefully that all makes sense. Here we go. So there's my, my top tie tree where everything's coming from, all the rigging and my climb line. And because it's way up there, I can get way out on these skinny little branches and cut nice tips like I did right here. Just a little small two inch cut. And uh, I'm gonna take a couple more up there. And I took another little guy right here. And that's how we're gonna reduce this thing a little bit, trying to keep it from Keep it from overgrowing this garage too much more. Right down there. There goes Caleb with the branches. So I'm way over the top of this roof right now and I spotted from the ground this hanger. I don't know, you can kind of see it right there. There's where it's broken off. That's about a six inch diameter branch and it's just hanging up in this oak limb, right? Just barely suspending the tips over the garage. So this is gonna be a trick to rig down and it has to be rigged otherwise, you know, that it will land on the roof for sure. So what I've done here is I've I've climbed all the way out to this branch and I'm going to rig that branch on a sling. I'm going to have it on one end of my rigging line and then I'm going to climb. I'm also going to tie on the main tip that I'm trying to remove just for the tip reduction. And I'm going to rig them down together and run my rigging line through a redirect just a little bit below me here on this branch so that it can all come out together and hopefully won't get caught up in the tips below me because that's a huge pain when that happens. So I've got my little redirect below me there. And then I've got that double legged uh, little extendo piece on there. That's one of my crane slings that I made. So it's got two legs. I'm gonna tie one of those legs onto our branch that's suspended. And I'm gonna tie the other leg probably on either right here or maybe just past that break so that I can cut it all at once and have it all peel out of the tip. And, and, and then I'm gonna have a guide position down there on the roof to, to land it.
All right, so hopefully you found that useful. Um, this tree we didn't end up actually using in the GRCS because I was able to string bigger clumps of branches together so that it added some weight and was able to just push them out because I got so far out on the tips. So the GRCS was there if we needed it. If I needed to pull something out, I wouldn't have to muscle it. But as it turns out, we didn't have to use it. Uh, but as it is, it was all really smooth. Now we're going to go ahead and use the GRCS to retrieve all the material and or all of the, the canopy anchors and such, particularly the, the big blue heavy rope, that's our main support. We use the GRCS on our rigging line to pull that all out all the way to the ground from the ground. So hopefully everything should retrieve. I got my fingers crossed about the Petzl eject because as anyone who's used retrievable uh, canopy anchors before knows, it's always a little bit questionable, especially with this darn Samson Mercury rope. It's kind of slippery, and so when I put my retrieval ball on there, I'll have to knot it real good because it's going to want to just slide off if I'm not careful. But anyway, now's the cleanup. Ready? Yeah. So this here is my backup basal anchor on my climb line, and I'm just pulling it out right now. I got it untied from the tree, and then when I pull on this, I should be able to pull three, the, the knot that's in the back, and that little uh, throw ball that's over on the climb side should release the Petzl eject up top there. So we're going to try and make that happen. It worked. So the throw ball caught in there, released the eject, this came out, and I didn't have to pull my rope through a sappy union the whole way. And so that's kind of the point of this, is it keeps me from having to sap my rope the whole time it's up there. Now the other part that we get to retrieve is this GRCS. So remember, we've got our rigging line up and through there. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna put a retrieval object on the end of my rigging line, pull it all the way up to the pulley, and then we'll put it on the GRCS to pull the pulley down to the GRCS and that'll allow our base anchor for the rigging to come up and out all in one go and we'll be done. First we got to lower any remaining limbs that got left on the uh, climb or the rigging line. Looks like we've got four on there now. <laughs> so I'm retrieving my rigging point now and I tie a little knot on here and that'll probably block into the pulley and that should be enough. But just in case I threw a figure eight because this can't th pull through the pulley and I really don't want this rope to pull out because then I got to climb all the way back up and I already pulled out my climb line. So should have paid more attention to that. But anyway, Caleb, will you untie the base anchor on our rigging and I'm going to go ahead and pull it out from here using our rigging line. So pull this all the way through. Right. Sounds like that's up there. Now I could uh, pull on this real hard like, like so, or because I've got this here, we could just uh, use our technology. Now that looks easy, but there is a almost a full wrap around the tree up at the top there. So there's a lot of friction keeping this from coming down. If I hadn't had the GRCS, that would have been arduous to say the least. So you can kind of see how that jammed in there. In this case, the knot did slip through. And so it's only because I put the, uh, that figure eight on there that it managed to, to grab. That can come out, this can come out. And all the rigging's out of the tree. No more climbing to be done.